I just have to do something real quick. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 through 10, the New Living Translation version of the Bible says this. When the cool evening breeze were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. They was walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord Almighty uh, in the trees. And then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. And if you go down to the 21, 21st verse, it says, and the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and his wife. Hallelujah. So I'm going to take the subject topic from the verse of the scripture up in verse 9 and 10 where it says, Then the Lord God called to the man and said, Where are you? He replied, I hid. I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. So today's topic of your message today is Who's behind the mask? Ooh, come on, sir. Who's behind the mask? So let me just tell you really quick a, a, a quick story of how this um, how this is coming about here. So in the Bible scripture reference here, of course, God created Adam and Eve, and so and God will come visit them uh, in the cool of the day. He'll God will has always want to have fellowship with someone. And so Adam was that person that he would always have fellowship with. He said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. And so a lot of people, you have to understand is that when you look yourself in the mirror, you see God because you're created. You're made in his likeness. So I don't know how you can say that you don't like yourself when and then say love God when you look at yourself in the mirror you see the ex exact image reflection of God so uh, here on today uh, God was coming to make his evening visit in the cool of the day and so Adam and Eve they had did something bad and so they hid themselves they because they realized that they were naked and ashamed. And so God said, who told you that you was naked? How you even come into that knowledge that you were naked? And so then that's when the blame game started. Uh, it was you, it was her, and him, and them, and everybody else. And so uh, you, you start doing the blame game and what's happening in your life. And so... Uh, one thing you have to understand is that when sin happens, uh, because God cannot look on the face of sin, that there has to be blood that has to be shed to cover the sin. And so what ended up happening is that God had to kill an animal, shed the blood of the animal so that he can cover Adam and Eve so he can begin to see them because God can't look on the face of of sin, he literally turns his head and turns his turns away from people who sin. So in order for him to even look at you, God, the the sin has uh, uh, when sin happens, blood has to be shed. Take your time now. Come on. And so now there's blood that has shed it because the Bible said God made clothes from animal skin. And so right now today, let me just uh, prophetically uh, insert this for you, is that uh, when you sin, God can't look on the face of sin, but because of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us and he shed his blood yes, sir. to be able to not only just cover our sins, but his blood washed away our sins. What? can wash away our sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What 
can make us whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And so here it is now. It is 2022. We as a human race have learned how to fake it until we make it. There, 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 we learn how to put up a front in front of people. A lot of times people don't even cook anymore. They don't know how to make green uh, green beans and collard greens and take the ham hock and let that thing smoke up a little bit and then put the greens in there and let that boil and do all that good good stuff. They don't know how to do that no more. They go, they go to, to the Walmart or to, uh, to whatever grocery store they like to go to, go get some glory greens. And they, can, and they can take them glory greens and put them in a microwave or put them in a pot in 30 minutes you got a meal. People don't, they, they fake it until they make it. You got people that's going to school and they got so much education, they're doing this and doing that now while they're in school, but behind the scenes while they're in school, they get all this information and still graduate, but still don't know what's going on. Have no knowledge. And they say, I really don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm doing. But listen, I had to fake it until I made it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you have people that's training for jobs and positions and things. And they say, hey, I'm qualified to be able to do the job. But what ended up happening a lot of times is that uh, they're trained for the position. They're qualified for the position. Then you put them into position. They really don't know what to do. But they say, honey, I'm faking it until I can make it. They put on a mask. A lot of times people are in relationships and they're in marriages and they can't stand the other person. But they say, I'm in it for the children. I'm in it for this reason. If I was to leave, uh, honestly, I don't have nowhere to go. So, you know, they're faking something. They're covering up something that, my God, that they're saying, listen, I'm faking it until... I mean, I have discovered that in the body of Christ, we often uh, want perfect people in the church. There's nothing wrong with them. Everything is good, and they don't and they don't want to help them face their battles. Everything has to be peaches and cream. And so, and we get sick of dealing with people that have issues. We don't want them to tell us what's happening with them. And then they would just say, hey, listen, the end result is just all that you need is Jesus and you'll be all right. I'm here to tell you today, sometimes you need just a little bit more than Jesus. You need him, you need some counseling, and you need some people to better say, hey, listen, I just need to be able to sit down and talk just for a little bit. You uh, come, come to a lot, a lot of pastors and leaders and preachers and people say that they're apostles, all this other kind of stuff. They want people just to come to church. They say they sermon, preach their little word, tell them to get their tithes and offerings, and just say, oh, Jesus will work it out. But baby, if you're in a leadership position, if you're a pastor, you're a bishop, and you're in a leadership position, and a person is coming to you with some issues, you got to set aside time to be able to help them with their issues. They need coaching. They need counseling. They need help. And sometimes they need to talk to somebody so that they can get the help that they need. Hallelujah. The truth of the matter is this, is that we really don't want to help people deal with their issues. We really don't want to. And so, here it is. The truth about it is this, is that you, you also don't want to tell uh, Deborah's you know, Deborah, she's dealing with something. She's dealing with, you know, baby daddy and dealing with this and dealing that. And you telling her, hey, Lisa, listen, Jesus will work it out. But then she's going home to a man that's bopping her upside her head. Oh, Jesus will work it out. It, this this man keep this woman keep getting slapped around left and right and you don't have no no resolve for her you don't have 
Um, no, no, no way for her to be able to come out. And this is a member, this is a person in your church. And they said, Pastor, I'm dealing with this, but you don't want to be able to deal with the issue. Then why pastor a church? Why pastor people? Why call yourself an apostle if you don't know how to first build up people? Because the work of the apostle is so that you can build the church. But how can you build a church and you can't build people? So that's why I don't understand. I'm sorry I'm going a little rant here. I don't understand why people, as soon as they start passing a church, they become the apostle. How you become the apostle and you never even pastor people? You never raised people. You never took care of people. You never allowed them to be in and walk them through their process. How do, you, how do you preach to a young man or a young woman whose parents are mentally and physically abusing them? How, how do you minister to them? You don't just cover it up by saying, oh, just, just talk to Jesus, to tell Jesus. They're physically and mentally abusing them and covering it up with church rhetoric. A child taken from their family, growing up in foster care, these families don't take care of them. They don't feed them. They don't give them the right supply of the food that they need. And then they abuse them and they hurt them. And they make the child feel hopeless and, and, and lost and alone. And those children are fighting for their lives. And so they come to church looking for Jesus. That's the reason why most of them don't come to church because they're looking for help. And you say, oh, just give them Jesus. But you got to be the person and say, listen, baby, let me walk you through this process just a little bit. They're feeling lost. They're feeling lonely. They're feeling alone. And they feel like that, 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 that something's wrong with them. And they're looking for an answer. And we say, Jesus is the answer. But also, let me bridge the gap for you really quick and say, you need a mentor. You need a counselor. You need some therapy. I'm here to tell you today, baby, you need some therapy. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Take your time. These kids, they need some therapy. They need somebody to talk to because sometimes they can't talk to mommy. Sometimes they can't talk to daddy. Sometimes they can't talk to the auntie and the uncle. And most likely, mm, hallelujah, they can't talk to them. And they, then they go into a life of drugs and they go into a life of alcohol because they're dealing with the issue that their mother died. They're dealing with the issue that their father died due to violence and many other things that have happened to them in their lives. How do we minister to kids that are now adults in learning how to cover up their emotions, covering up what they're feeling, covering up the wounds and the scars, and they've never been healed. They lived this life for the past 25 to 30 years. And now they come to church and two weeks later you want them all better. Let me tell you something. God don't want you better. He wants you right. Come on, come on. You take your time now. But if I've been living a certain lifestyle after a certain amount of time, I only know that lifestyle. I only know the how to how, how to live in that place. Yes, come on. And so now you're talking about 25, 30 years of living a certain way. Now that I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, now I have to have a paradigm shift. And my mind has to switch from one end to the next end because I'm used to living some kind of way. And so it is hard to be able to make that switch overnight. It's hard to be able to live and, 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 and live a certain kind of way. So, and so what we do, we build up walls. We put on masks yes. on our face. A lot of these, I've come to find out that a lot of these people have accepted Jesus Christ is their Lord and personal Savior, but little Johnny is broken. Little Johnny is broken from being molested from an uncle or a cousin. 
Little Johnny actually do really do like girls, but because of the molestation that happened to him when he was younger, he still feels just a little bit type of way about some things when he see a certain person or a certain someone or a certain type because I, I know that it's really not right in the eyesight of the Lord, but I, I, I struggle with my flesh concerning something that happened to me as a child. And so what I do is I put a mask on my face so that it will cover up the hurt, the pain, the depression, the agony, feeling like I was defeated and feeling like I have no low self-esteem. I put the mask on my face. And so now little Johnny comes to church and little Johnny says, hey, listen, pastor. Hey, listen, preacher. Hey, listen, leader. I'm coming to you because I'm suffering with an issue and I'm suffering with a problem. And you and what you do is you tear little Johnny down. Little Johnny don't deserve to be torn down. Little Johnny is now big Johnny. But there's still a little Johnny that's on the inside of him that says, I need hope. I need love. I need compassion. I need counseling. I need a friend that's speaking closer than a brother. Someone that can love me like none other. But we don't want to pastor people. We don't want to pastor people. We don't want to help people walk through their process. We don't want people, we want people to be better all of a sudden. But let me tell you something. If I lived a certain life for so many years, you got to help me come out because you got to go into the years of my pain and my affliction. You got to go into years of my hurt and my turmoil. We are people, we hold in and we hide and we cover up certain things behind masks that eventually we don't even know who we are. We don't know. And as pastors, it's our job, it's our duty to find out who these people are. A lot of people come to us with all kind of masks on. You better preach. You better preach, Pastor. They come to us with all kind of masks on. And so that you have a world that says put a mask on so that you won't get infected by certain things. And so now we have a mask on. And on that mask is blood. And it's not the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of our afflictions. It's the blood that has hurt her. It's the blood that when some, when that man that penetrated you, that raped you and molested you, blood is still on you. And so not only do you wear a spiritual mask, now you got on a physical mask. And so nobody can't see what's happening on your face. I don't know if you're smiling. I don't know if you're frowning. I don't know if you're giving me resting bee face. I don't know what's going on right here. But I know that there's a mask that's covering up right there. You got a preach, Pastor. And so, been hurt and now because I've been molested and raped and now because I have my family who has done me wrong and so now not only am I covered up my mouth and my nose now I'm covering up my eyes because I don't want people to see the hurt and the pain that's in my eyes and so now I'm saying Lord God 
I really need some help and I really need some deliverance but I got to put the mask on because I have to walk around like everything is fine and I got to walk around like everything is perfect and I'm saying that I don't have no hurt and I'm saying that I have no pain but there's a mask I don't know who I've become I'm trying to be like somebody else that I've seen on TV I try to be like the first lady that it seems like that she has the perfect life I'm going around and I'm looking at the people that I see that I work with that seems like that they have the perfect life and so I put on the mask and I say God this is the person who I really want to be but because there's a certain image out there there's a certain image out there that people look for me being a pastor me being a leader me with a person that has money I have a certain look that I'm supposed to have on but unfortunately this is the mask that I have to put on and so then I say God but it seems like people can still see a certain things about me. And so God, there's something more that I have to do. I got to do. And so now, I got to put on a whole full face. I got to cover up every single thing that's not like the person who I really am. And so I put on a mask and I say, I don't know who I am anymore, but I feel like Rebecca. And so I'm going to look like Rebecca. I'm going to talk like Rebecca. I'm going to move like Rebecca. I'm going to act like Timmy. I'm going to act like Tommy. But deep on the inside, this is not the person who I am. And so wait a minute. But I'm the wrong color face. Oh my goodness. So what happened is that I have to make myself look just a little bit prettier. And so I grab the, I grab the lipstick. And I say, okay, I got to put the lipstick on on my lips to make me feel beautiful because Johnny he likes the lipstick that Rebecca has on. And so I got to put the lipstick on and say, wait a minute. And I still got some blemishes that I have in my life that I don't want people to see. And so I know that my wife is like, oh my God, this guy is going crazy. But listen, I got to put on just a little bit of concealer on my mouth and on my face to cover up the blemishes to cover up the yeah. things I don't want people to see. Yeah. I got to put it on my face because I don't want them to see what's actually behind me. Woo, I put on a mask. I'm not rich. I'm, I, don't, I don't have the money to make it. And so now I'm messy. I'm messy with the stuff that's supposed to cover up. The stuff that's not right about me. And I'm saying, God, I need your help. And I don't have people to be able to help me to be able to come out and be delivered from the mask that I have on me. God, I need your help. Yes, God. Ooh, glory. A lot of people, they don't have the time. Yeah, yeah, they don't have on. the patience come on. to go through the deliverance process. We put this mask on. We hide ourselves. Yes. We hide ourselves behind the foundation. Yes. We hide ourselves behind the lipstick and the glamour. We hide ourselves behind the yes. fame and the fortune. Yes. We hide ourselves, and not only are we hiding ourselves behind one mask, yes. but we have multiple masks that's covering up certain things and certain issues in our lives. Hidden behind the mask are the failures, yes. the truth, yes. the depravity, 
And I'm here to tell you the lying, the stealing, the lust. You're hiding behind things. And then we walk around with these masks on. And we say, hey, everything's fine. Yeah. Everything's fine. I can see you real. Everything's fine. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Everything's fine. But let me tell you today, everything's not fine. You got to come take this mask off of you. Yes. You got to take this mask yes. off of you. The match that says that everything is perfect. Yes. The match that says everything is fine. Yes. You got to give up that lipstick that it looked like that because Johnny liked yes. Rebecca wear the same lipstick that you wear that oh. is going to cause him to grab your attention. Oh, yeah. Who's behind the mask that you're wearing? You got to come out of that mask that you're wearing. Stop allowing people to tell you who you are and what you are. Yes. Yes, stop. Mm -hmm. yes, stop. Yes. Am I good? of everything is fine. Thank you. It's hidden behind this mask and so many things, but uh, it's really fear yes. that you're dealing with. Yes. We are clothed in Christ. We are adopted in God's family where we should be able to know that we have acceptance in our family. Yes, it doesn't matter what you've gone through the hurt, the pain that you've gone through, there's acceptance. Sadly, we all have felt a measure of betrayal. Sad but true, we've all felt the measure of hurt. Sad but true, we have all felt a measure of rejection. And so we use those masks to hide behind walls. We begin to protect ourselves behind the mask. Yes, but the gospel of Jesus allows us to be able to come boldly into the presence of God. And, uh, 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 and so this is the reason why I'm saying you have to be able to find yourself a close friend, a close a partner, a close somebody that you can openly talk to and make you feel like that uh, your business is not going to go out into the street. Find yourself a spiritual counselor to be able to say, say hey, listen, my brother, my sister, this, these are the things that I'm going through. I'm hiding behind a mask. You feel like that you're, you're pitiful. You feel like that you're down in the dumps. But I'm here to declare to you today that you're coming out from behind that mask. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 10 through 20, Paul says this in the scripture. No one is righteous. No, not even one. That means that we're all dealing with something. It says, uh, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is truly seeking God. And that blew me away. It's like, wow, wait, where are the people that seeking God? All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good. Not a single person. Their talk is foul like the stench from the open grave. Their tongues are filled with lives. Snakes venom drip from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. These are the people that's hiding behind this mask. They rush to uh, commit murder, destruction, and misery always follow them. They do not 
uh, they don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. Obviously, the law applies to those to whom it was given for. Its purpose is to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before God. For no one could ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we really are. So let me tell you something. I don't care what you're going through. And I don't care who you are today. I'm here to tell you that we have all sinned and we all have come short to the glory of God. So I'm here to tell you, for those of you who are hiding behind the mask, to come up out of that mask. Like my wife said earlier today, come up out of that grave. Come out of that depression. Come out of that thing that so easily besets you. For God is with you. He'll rot and his staff will comfort you. And I'm here to tell you today, to, hallelujah, to come out of that mess. Come out of those things right now in the name of Jesus. But I'm not ready yet, honey. I'm 18. Here we go. Hey. Woo! Let's consider a few things. And then I'm going to take this home. That, 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 that was a good roundup right there. That was a good roundup right there. I was, woo, Jesus, yes. That was a good one right there. Let me help you guys out because I'm, I'm talking about you have the mask on, but how do you come out of taking off those masks? I'm going to give you some examples. Number one, like I said earlier today, is that you need to be able to seek help, seek counseling. Uh, uh, to a, to, and make sure it's a comfortable person that you're mature with and they're a believer. Because there is such a thing as Holy Ghost counseling. I might not be licensed as a counselor, but I know how to counsel people through the Holy Ghost. Through the Holy Ghost. So uh, when we are hiding the pain of uh, infertility, when we're hiding the pain of miscarriage, when we're hiding the pain of your child being critically ill, when you're hiding behind the pain of mental and physical health issues, seek help from the ministry of comfort. Seek help from people that can pray. Seek help from people that can bring you out and that can help you with deliverance. Number two, and when you are hiding in fear, of an emotional, emotional and physical abuse because I'm not going to uh, pretend like that there is no abuse still happening to people. Emotional and physical abuse of a spouse or a loved one or a child. I'm here to tell you to seek help for protection. Ask somebody to pray for you but also seek help for protection. Come out of that situation. I heard somebody say one time, you know, because they was in, uh, a friend of theirs was in an abusive relationship. And they said, how come they keep going back? How come they keep going back? So they gave the story and they said, it's just like the dog who walks around and they know the nail is there, but they still sit on the nail. And they say, how can a dog sit on that nail? And they said, because the nail didn't hurt enough. So I'm here to tell you today, my brothers and my sister, if somebody is mentally and physically abusing you, then a hurt must not hurt good enough. It didn't hurt enough. So if you're in a position to where you're in a marriage, come away from that abusive relationship. Number three, uh, when we're hiding behind the mask, of um, ineffective parenting because I truly believe that there are some people who did not parent their children correctly. They did not. Now, and I'm not here to say that there's a handbook in parenting, but I am here to say that there are some people who did not take care of their children to their fullest potential. That's all I'm saying. But, or if you're, if you are dealing with feeling like that you are not parenting your children correctly 
and you're struggling in that area of your life, I'm here to tell you to seek out some wise counsel. Allow the Holy Spirit to be able to minister to you and allow biblical wisdom. This is the reason why you need people that's Holy Ghost led. The biblical wisdom to practice to help you improve in your parenting. If not improve your parenting, or if you feel like that you've been improperly parented, so that you don't have any malice against your parents, that they can pray for you for deliverance because you're hurt, yeah. wounded yeah. child. You're a hurt, wounded adult. You're hurt and you're wounded, but there's still a little Johnny on the inside of you that said, I don't know why my mother couldn't come home at nighttime. There's still a little hurt, little Johnny on the inside that says, my father went out for a pack of cigarettes and never came back. And there's still a little Johnny on the inside of you that said, I still don't understand how come somebody touched me in that way when I was younger. There's still a little Johnny that's on the inside of you that says, I don't know why people treated me that way. When it comes down to hiding sins that you have done in your past, sins that you're currently struggling with in your present life, certain things as overspending, overeating, striving to be the best, pornography, substance abuse, all this other kind of stuff that said, that you know that's on the inside of you that's totally wrong and against the will of God. I'm here to tell you today that Jesus said, I came to set the captives free. And he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And he said, he has delivered you out of slavery, out of bad behaviors, out of bad habits. God is saying to you today that you can be free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Isaiah 61 to arise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Turn me up just a little bit here. Hallelujah. God is saying it's time for you to come out of that sickness. It's time for you to come out of depression. It's time for you to come out in the name of Jesus. God wants you to take the mask off. Who is behind the mask? Arise and shine. For the light has come. In the glory of El Elohim. The glory of El Shaddai. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. No longer do you need the foundation to cover up your mist. No longer do you need the foundation to cover up the stuff that you feel like that you don't want people to see. No longer do you need to cover up the flaws. God is sent for you to come out in the name of Jesus, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up against you, God said that he already condemned. I know there may have been some people that have said that you're nobody. And I know that there may have been people that says that you're no good. And they drunk your name through the mud. And you felt like giving up. But I'm here to say today, who are you behind that mask? Who are you behind that mask? Who are you, says the Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 37, he said, don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they shall soon fade away. And like the spring flowers, they soon shall wither. But trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Delight in the Lord 
and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in the Lord and he will help you and he will make you like the radiance, like the dew in the morning and the justice of your cross will shine like the noonday sun. I like to say it like this, that favor ain't fair. Hallelujah, favor ain't fair. What is favor you may say? I'm glad that you ask. Favor is the fragrance that attracts God. It's you like you paint it with the fragrance that attracts God. So I'm here to tell you today, take off those masks from off of your face for the favor of the Lord is upon you and he's painting you with the fragrance that attracts God. And God can be able to say, sitting down on his throne seat, he can say, who's that? That's my child, Shannon. Who's that? That's my child, Johnny. Who's that? That's my child, Nadisha. Who's that? That's my child, Henry. Who's that? That's my child, Yolanda. Who's that? That's my child, David. Who's that? That's my child, Kelly. Who's that? And the Bible says, that he inhabits the praises of his people. The literal translation means that he stands up off the throne and he says, oh my goodness, I see my children praising. So I might as well go ahead and send them a blessing. I might as well go ahead while they're praising me. I might as well go ahead and bless them. Let me increase them. Let me allow double to come upon their life. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you today to take off the mask. I like to watch the TV show, The Mask Singer. And The Mask Singer has celebrities singing behind the mask. But when they get voted off the show, the mask singer says, who are you? And they begin to chant, take it off, take it off, take it off. And then you begin to hear the music begin to come in. And it says, who are you? Who, 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 who are you? So I'm here to say to you today, child of God, who are you? Who, 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 who are you? Take the mask off. Don't act like Richie. Don't act like Rebecca. Don't act like Charles. Don't preach like the next preacher. You're not Juanita Bynum. And you're not Lone Jones. And you're not Rob Parsley. And you're not T.D. Jakes, but you are Shannon Young. You are my teacher Young. You are the child of God. And you are child of the King. So take off the mask. Who, who, who are you? Who are you? Take it off. Take it off. Take off the depression. Take off the sickness. Take off the sadness. Take off the worry. Take off the unloving heart. Take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. Who are you? Take it off. Discover who you are. Discover who you are. Not who you try to be. Discover who you are. Because in Jesus Christ, the Bible says that you are a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. So I'm here to tell you today, come out in the name of Jesus. Come out of that sickness. Come out of that worry. Take off the mask up.
the mask off. Take it off. Rip it off. Go through those layers. Go back into your past. I'm here to tell you today, if your little Uncle Bobby, if he molested you, go back and say, I forgive you. If you experienced a rape in your life and you don't know who the person is, just walk around and say, I forgive you. If your father, if he slapped you around, left and right, and if your father is still alive, call him up and say, I forgive you. And if he say, for what? Just say, I forgive you. That's all you need to know. And release it. Take that mask off. Take that hurt off. Take that depression off. If your mother is still alive and she cuss you out, from one end of the city ha, to the next end of the city, ha, just call her up and say, I forgive you. Because everybody want to know ha, who is ha, behind the mask. Ha, who are you ha, behind the mask? Ha, take off. Ha, Jesus! They talk about you like a dog. <laughs> made you put a mask on. <laughs> They made you feel like huh, that you was nobody. Huh. They made you feel like huh, that you was no good. Huh. But I'm here to tell you today, huh, rip it off. Huh. that he's brought you over. And for every trial, he's seen you through. Yeah. And for every blessing, I have to say hallelujah. hallelujah. For this, I give him praise. Can we just lift up the name of Jesus right here? Yeah. Just really quick. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, worship the Lord with us. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. You see me through 
on, get your praise on him for every blessing. Lord, I say hallelujah. suffer and hurt, feel like they were lost and alone, like I was the only one that been through it, trust me, you're not the only one that been through it, you're not the only one that failed the test, you're not the only one, I need you to believe and receive that you are never, ever alone. Miss Misty White, I see that you're currently watching us right now. I want to just speak this a word of encouragement to you that you are not alone. God, he sees you. He sees you right where you are. He sees the hurt, the pain, the disappointment. He sees you. He wants me to tell you that he loves you. He will never leave you. He has never left you. He's always been right by your side. There may have been a few sticky situations, but God says that I made a way of escape yes, for you. Continue to believe, trust, hope, and know that God, He is with you. 
he'll never, ever leave you or leave your side. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the evangelist, Father Tootie. Father God, I pray, Lord, for him, and I pray, God, that you cover him in the name of Jesus. Cover him right there in Nigeria, God. We thank you, Lord. Bless him and increase him. Oh, God. And we thank you so much. Father God, we pray, Lord, for Mr. David, little David, and Miss Yolanda right now, God, cover them and protect them right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for doing great things in the midst of great people, and I believe that Miss Yolanda and Mr. David are great people, and they're doing great things, and we thank you, God, for blessing them. Blessing Albuquerque, New Mexico, right now. In the name of Jesus. Hey, listen, for those of you who are watching, I know I sent a text message out to a few people for watching us on YouTube. Listen, if you're looking for a good church home, let me tell you something. If I wasn't a pastor here, I'll probably join here myself. So if you're looking for a good church home, you say, hey, um, you know, I'm not going to church right now currently. But I do need a pastor. I do need somebody to pray for me. If that's all, if that's all Pastor Shannon ever do, is just pray for me. I need for him and his wife to keep me covered in prayer. Please let us know. Reach out to us. We would love to pastor you. We meet Monday nights for Empowerment Night, where we're going over the Tabernacle of Moses. And we're learning so much. Just a little bit that we did last week. And my wife got so super excited. was like, yo! How come people don't teach like this? Because they really don't want to pastor people. They want to hoop and holler. <laughs> and, and collect their offering and go home. One thing you will do. Here at One Touch Ministries. You will get that Bible. You will learn that Bible. That's for sure. You will be impacted and empowered. That's one thing that you will do here with this ministry because here at this ministry, as you see right there on the screen, it says we believe in touching hearts and changing lives. And so that's what we're here to do. We're here to touch your heart, change your lives because like I said earlier today, God just don't want you better. God, he really does want you right. In order to do that, we have to be able to touch your heart and when we touch your heart, when God touches your heart, he's going to automatically change your life because you're not going to want to do the same things that you've done before. And so that's a whole life change. That's a whole mind change. For anybody who's listening to me, who don't go to church or uh, haven't been to church in a long time, a lot of times you have to come out of that ditch that you have dug for so many years of living one way you have to change around and live your life a whole nother totally different way for the Lord Jesus Christ. How we do that? We do that by believing and trusting in him, yes, but we need leaders, we need people who are in place to be able to help you walk through those deliverances. And sometimes it takes more than just a pastor and a leader. Sometimes it takes a counselor, a therapist. Listen, go sit down in somebody's chair. <laughs> because as I come to find out that in the Christian world, and they so against going to the therapist. Then I come to find out that black folks so against going to the therapist. And sometimes you just need somebody to talk to. 
and start wearing out the same folks that you talk to all the time. Always calling your sister, always calling your brother, wearing them out. They done heard the same story 500,000 times. Go tell somebody else new and go pay for it. I bet you get it off your chest then. <laughs> I bet you get it off your chest then. You pay for it. <laughs> Allow somebody to actually help you come out of your state of depression, your state of loneliness, your state of whatever it is that you're in. Not coming down on anybody. I'm just saying that we we have to do better in the body of Christ. Yes, and one of those ways of doing better is through uh, talking, opening up. We have to open up and be able to talk to people, talk about ourselves. We have to. We have to come out of that everything is fine uh, mentality. We have to come out of that self-sufficiency. I didn't even get a chance to touch on that. Self-sufficiency. Behind, behind this mask is a failure to grasp the truth of our depravity. And when we don't see the depth of our need of Christ, we won't rely on Jesus for help. We think by avoiding certain behaviors such as lying, stealing, lust, and so on, we can feel like that we're doing pretty good. I think old folks call, call that being self-righteous. We have to come out of that. We got to take that mask off. Stop hiding behind the mask in the name of Jesus. Hey, listen, uh, we're getting ready to leave on today, but we want to thank you. Thank every single person that has tuned in and watched. Uh, <laughs> there's so many different platforms um, that we have to <laughs> go to. And so if you're watching, if you're currently watching live now, if you're currently, if you're going to be watching the replay, and we didn't get a chance to acknowledge you or shout you out, listen, we just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much. Hopefully the word that was spoken today was actually able to touch your heart and change your life, but I'm actually able to give you, yeah, you just gave it, yeah, um, be able to um, help you in the coming days the coming weeks, the coming months. So listen, on next uh, Sunday, service is going to be at 12 o'clock noon. So make sure you guys, uh, we'll make sure we continue to post that throughout the week. I'm Minister Henry. I'm letting you know right now, please post it every single day this week. <laughs> I'll give you the flyer. Make sure we post that every single day so everybody know that we're having service at 12 o'clock noon on next Sunday. It's only one Sunday only that we're doing 12 o'clock noon. Uh, and then we'll be back here in the sanctuary on the first Sunday of October. Oh, wow. And then it's only one month away. We're going to be doing the prophetic sound on the, in the East Coast. We got our tickets. Uh, Minister Henry got his tickets uh, yeah and then this week we should be releasing information and registration for dream camp so we'll have that information by next Sunday for sure and anything else I'm mentioning honey nope not mentioning did I forget anything but listen may, may the Lord God bless you may he keep you may his face shine upon you in Jesus Christ, in my name, in Master's name, amen. We love you guys. Take care. Until next time.